Hi guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. Today we are in a different environment, a different place. We are at the airport. Why? Because we're leaving for Japan, for Tokyo. I don't know what's gonna happen, I don't know what's gonna be on this video, but we'll discover that together. Ready to follow me? Let's go! First impact with Japan is always, I think, destabilizing. I mean, there's a lot of technology, but the people are doing different things. They barely talk to each other on public transports. So it's, it's strange. It's an awkward feeling. Let's see our first stop. Hi guys, we're at Disc Union, a cool record shop here in Tokyo. Here, as you can see, we have, for example, Three Blind Mice. This is a famous audiophile label, purely Japanese, and they have great jazz records. As you know, Japan is famous for their jazz records because they love jazz. Well, a lot of people actually don't know this, but I highly recommend these records. Let's take a look. Disc Union is actually a multi-shop. I mean, in the main cities of Japan, you find different uh, stores of Disc Union. And, it, and I must admit, is one of the best places if you're looking for uh, vinyl and CDs, recent releases, but also, for example, comics or books on the subject, so. Very good choices here. I think it's a worthwhile stop if you're in Tokyo or other big cities. As you will see in this video, jazz is huge in Japan and I'm a great jazz lover. You know that. But apart from that, when you're in Tokyo in the streets, you're submerged by colors, by smells, restaurants. I mean, they're, they're great foodies. I love this. And the, the atmosphere, I think, is very energizing and it's vibrating. You really can't wait to just go in places, tr tr try new things. And music is everywhere. In almost in every place we've been, people were listening to jazz. And I think that is very, very cool. Not only because I'm a jazz lover, but that means it's really something belonging to their culture. Even though it's something they inherited, not something they created. They did at a certain point. Let's pass to our new stop. Hi guys, today, actually tonight, we're in Kobe. This is a little small alley behind the big boulevards. And we're going to take a look at Hangesha Records. Follow me. I'm going to show you now a series of little shops which I think are very interesting and something typical of Japan. Also in other countries obviously, but here they have a true cult for this type of shops. And cassettes, yes!
as you can see almost all releases have their own obi that little piece of paper on the left sometimes and also on the right side describing uh, in detail the, the the release and the technical aspects a lot of people collect them okay guys here's another little place that looks pretty interesting let's take a look up we go here we have another small little shop and also here we have some cassettes and a little bit of everything Well, I found this XRCD of this jazz group, Panta Box. So, as you have seen here, there are lots of little shops just hidden away, tucked among these huge apartments, buildings. And that's something typical you can find in all these cities in Japan. They don't have that much stuff, but they do have some selected jewels, I think, especially if you're looking for uh, their own rock or jazz or stuff like that. So make sure you check them out. In all these indie shops, there's a lot of ambience and electronic music also. I'm not a big fan of that, so maybe you're not going to see that that much, but there, are, there is very present. As you can see, CDs are still very present, and the cool thing is that the, release, the releases on CD are always almost high quality. Also, you can, as you can see, you can find super audio CDs and different kinds always in the shops, and that's something missing in Europe, I think. If you're wondering about prices, the prices are decent. I mean, we're going around 1,000, 2,000 yen, which that's more or less 20, 25 dollars, euro. And now, obviously, some Kobe beef. As you may have understood by now, I'm a foodie. We just discovered this little jazz club just around the corner. Let's go and take a look. Like that place we saw last night, here they're just playing a lot of jazz music or classical music as you can see. So let's take a look. Let's go in. Yes, and I discovered that um this type of shops, of cafes, of places to listen music with high quality materials, uh, LPs, CDs, Super Audio CDs, together with high quality gear. I mean, all these places have Macintosh, Accuphase, uh, the best of the best, 
just sitting there ready for the people so they can enjoy high quality jazz or classical music while they're sipping their coffee or just getting some hochicha tea. A very cool feature of Japan which I would dearly love in Italy. Obviously, the downside, maybe, some people would say, is the crowd, is the people in the cities. You're always completely submerged by people all over the place. You always have to wait for these stop signs, and it takes forever to get in other places. But if you move out a little bit outside the cities, you also can find very nice and relaxing villages. And that's what we try to do, because both sides of the, of the metal, we could say of the coin, are intrinsic parts of Japan and we both love them. Hi guys, today we're in Osaka and this is a huge city and obviously we also have record shops, western record shops like Tower Records. I know this is not something typical but we already seen a few small little shops. Let's take a look now at a big okay? classical music fan you're gonna find a lot of releases guys in these shops it's amazing how much fantastic quality digital mainly digital I would say but also analog um, media you're gonna find here there was another section of the shop dedicated to pop music and it was crammed filled. This part was empty. See here now you can see some jazz labels or simply uh, Japan music labels. And I mean all these releases, even if they're digital, extremely well con 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 built, combined and presented. And obviously the quality and the mastering is very, very good. There is a reason why these Japanese issues are superior in most cases to the normal releases and as you can see just normally you can find MQA you can find the the, the different kinds of CDs of the new materials that they're, that re they're releasing now something very difficult to find very expensive if you want to try and buy them from the US or in Europe and here you just walk in a shop and you can find the best and most incredible and esoteric releases of your favorite album for example, here they just released this new version of this Miles Davis album on a triple Super Audio CD. Fantastic. See, as you can see, they, they have the sections dedicated to each person sometimes. I, I love that. That's cool. As you can see, Venus, trying to put into focus here, is a great, fabulous jazz label, Japan, Japanese label, which I highly recommend. One of the best of all time, especially their LP vinyl versions, but also their Super Audio CDs. And the catalog just goes on and on with high quality versions. Another cool feature in most shops, obviously, you can find all the dedicated accessories for your vinyl records. In this case, mainly of Nagaoka. I've, I've shown you several of these in my videos. So here's a link to one or two.
great fusion album. Hi guys, we're in Yonobashi. It's one of the most huge and gigantic place for electronics, and obviously they have a lot of stuff for hi-fi. Let's take a look. Now this place is heaven, I mean, and I'm sure it's nothing that special, but it does collect most of the of the products, accessories, hi-fi products coming from Japan and overseas, but mainly Japanese. So if you're hunting, you like those products, this is the place to go. As you've seen, some turntables, different kinds of mats, Something very similar to mine, I see here, for a fraction of the price. Head shells, yes. Head shell heaven. Accessories, accessories, accessories. All the ones you've been dreaming in your wildest of dreams. Obviously, there are dozens of cartridges, mainly Audio-Technica, Nagaoka, and other Japanese models, pr products, but not only. Grado. And, I mean, I think that's amazing. You're not going to find this stuff at Best Buy or Euronix here in Italy or something like that. I mean, you just walk here in this huge place, but there's everything you can imagine for your hi-fi setup. Oyaide, one of my favorite Japanese uh, brands as you know and I must admit that the prices are quite good their power plugs are the best of the best I think for example and along with Furutech another Japanese brand great stuff although a little expensive there was even this stand by Technics presenting a new high-definition high-resolution uh, player CD and other media I believe And obviously there's all the rest, uh, you can imagine, loudspeakers, amplifiers, as you can see also Macintosh, so all, also other overseas products, a little bit of everything. But there is great attention devoted to hi-fi, you can just sense that. Stax, as you know, now is a Japanese brand, and obviously there's their whole setup here. And cassettes, only Maxo, but a nice big stand of cassettes. Hi guys, tonight we're in Kyoto and we're gonna take a look at this live jazz place. It's called Le Club Jazz. Let's go and take a look. Live music, guys. There's a lot of these jazz clubs, you do have to hunt, hunt for them because obviously on Google Maps they're advertising in Japanese.
Hi guys, we're back in Tokyo for our last day and I finally found a shop dedicated to cassettes, waltz. Now we're gonna try and go in. I read on Google that maybe we can't shoot there. Let's see what the, what the owner says. I'm, I'm desperately wanna find some good cassettes of local artists or even mm, productions coming from overseas. Let's take a look. Waltz is a great little place if you're hunting for cassettes when, you, when you're in Tokyo. It's not on the main routes, but if you take a dedicated metro, you can stop by and find anything you want. I mean, normal cassettes, audio file cassettes, new releases, books, VHSs, and lots of uh, machines and gear. As you can see, everything is neatly presented with a little commentary, year, evaluation, very cool. And here on the back side of the shop, you can find a nice, very nice selection of vintage boom boxes. Yes, ghetto blasters, fantastic. All in pristine condition and obviously for sale at a decent price, I must say. All these models go for double or triple of the price uh, shown here on eBay. So if you have room in your suitcase, go for it. Little place where you can test records and also cassettes. And also a nice little stand with Walkmans. Not the best of the best, but a nice selection for those who are looking for a new model, an old new model. So here we are back in Shibuya, one of the most crowded places in Japan. It's insane trying to get across the roads. But as I said before, I mean, this is one of the multiple faces of Japan. And uh, I mean, it's part of the adventure, it's part of the experience. You can't uh, leave this behind. And once you've been there a little while, you understand that everything has its place. I mean, there's a place where you can be in the crowd, there's a place where you can be nice and silent, and enjoy your tea, and find yourself like I did. See, with my nice little kimono here. An audiophile in Japan, that's me. So, in the end, there's a little space for everyone, and if you love music, you love jazz, Tokyo, Japan in general, is the place to be. Thank you, guys. guys if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below also don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community